Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1,153. Today on Cars Yeah, I'm celebrating the Cigar City Concours that takes place on Sunday, November 11th at the Starkey Ranch in Odessa, Florida. If you wanted to learn more, go to CigarCityConcours.com. The cure for boredom is curiosity, and there is no cure for curiosity. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, automotive enthusiasts. I'm revved up and so excited to introduce today's very special guest, Mark McCracken. Hey, Mark, are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? Absolutely. All right. Mark McCracken is founder and CEO of MakeModel.com, an automobile-focused trivia game that challenges players to guess the make and model of the day's featured vehicles based on a very closely cropped photo. A seasoned professional, his career in automotive marketing began 20 or so years ago as exec producer and co-owner of Motorsports Weekly Television, an Emmy-winning original cable show that looked at the lighter side of racing. Over the years, he's had the opportunity to work with some of the top companies in the automotive aftermarket industry, inventing new and relevant ways to connect brands to consumers. And like so many of us, he picked up the car hobby from his father, took him to auto shows and taught him how to do basic maintenance on the cars. So, Mark, I've told our listeners just a little bit about you. Would you take a brief moment, share a little more about your career? Uh, This new app is pretty cool. We're going to learn a lot about that. And here we are at SEMA this week, which makes this even more special because I understand you're launching this at SEMA this week. And, of course, your passion for automobiles. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. We are launching uh, Make Model this week at SEMA, but my background, uh, as you went into a little bit, I'm about 20 years in the uh, automotive aftermarket and have primarily worked on the agency side as the account director, account manager. And really, my role has always been along the lines of the car guy in the agency. More specific to that, I would always ask the question of the creatives. It's like, uh, this is this is great stuff, but you know, are we going to be able to sell any of this product to X guy, so X car guy out there? So uh, mm-hmm. I really kind of felt my role and saw my role always as the, uh, the voice of the car guy uh, on the agency side. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. And then, uh, and then a few, uh, a, a little while back, we kept thinking about what are some more fun things we can do. And that's where, uh, where Make Model came in. So, absolutely. Well, we're going to learn about that here. But first, I want to start our talk with a mantra or success quote, something that has some meaning for you. It's a nice way to get the inspirational tires turning here on Cars. Yeah. As if we need it here at SEMA Week, because man, there's a lot of inspiration at this place in Las Vegas. So, Mark, take the wheel. I love the quote from, I think it's originally attributed to Dorothy Parker, and it's, uh, the cure for boredom is curiosity, and there is no cure for curiosity. I think that's really interesting, especially with kids today. And I have to admit myself, too, growing up, everybody was bored. You know, I don't have anything to do. What do I do? And the truth is, if you're curious, you're never going to be bored. Again, particularly with kids, that's what we really need to do is we need to, to keep giving them opportunities to, uh, to push their curiosity boundaries. So big thing I've tried to live by is as long as I can. And the other quote is a real simple one, and it's just put your head down and work. And I heard that from my dad probably from the time I was 10 years old on. I think you and I had a similar father. I used to say, <laughs> I'm bored. And he'd go, that's funny. I thought your name was Mark. Uh-huh. And, and then, uh, yeah, he would just say, well, why would you choose to be bored? And I go, what? He goes, yeah. well, you're obviously choosing to be bored. There's plenty of stuff to do. Why don't you go rake the leaves? Then he won't be bored. So, yeah, I learned not to say that pretty quick. But I think you're right. Uh, it's a wonderful way to go through life. It's a great saying. And uh, as I keep saying, we're going to get into this app you've created because uh, you won't be bored playing with this. I guarantee it. Uh, it will rattle your mind and your thoughts. And it's kind of a, a fun thing for us car guys to kind of figure out where did that little line came from? What kind of car is that? So let's go back in time and talk about a story that instigated your personal passion for cars first, though. Is there a pivotal moment in your life when you knew you were indeed going to be a car guy? 
Yeah, I think like so many people in the industry, uh, we have to attribute it to our, our fathers or our uncles or our brothers. And in my case, it was my dad. Uh, my dad used to take my brother and I to car shows. He worked a, a regular job. He traveled quite a bit. Uh, he was not in the industry, but he loved cars. And I can remember many of Saturday where you, know, you finish mowing the grass and doing all the other things and the next chore is washing the car. There was a right way to do it and you only did it the right way. But uh, it really <laughs> gave me a, a, an appreciation for doing things the right way too. One thing led to another. And as we got older, you started learning about the maintenance and other things that were necessary. And uh, fortunately, then by the time I was 14, 15 years old, I was was more than hooked on it. Yeah, it's cool. My dad grew up on a farm in Texas where they basically fixed everything <laughs> themselves. And I think by the time he left the farm and moved out to California where I was raised, I think he was tired of fixing stuff because he really didn't work on cars very much, although he always encouraged me to try things and had a garage full of tools and said, well, go out and see if you can fix it. So, uh, yeah, these things our parents teach us are absolutely spectacular and fun and uh, help you kind of get over that hurdle. And you don't even realize you're learning it, you know, and 20, right. 30 years later, you realize, wow, I, I really did learn something from that guy. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, let's take a look at some of the roads you've driven down and talk about a big challenge or a big failure. I like this question a lot because it helps others who might be faced with these things learn from somebody who's gotten through them and learn something from us. And that's the best thing about a challenge or a failure is the learning lesson that we have. So walk us through one of those you've experienced and tell us how that helped you gain even more momentum as you move forward. Yeah, I think there's there's lots of challenges in life, obviously, especially the, the older you get in an industry. And the biggest challenge I faced recently is I got let go from the agency that I was where I was. There's a downsizing and, and I got let go. And I saw that and thought, you know what, while that's not a good thing, it potentially could be a great thing because I had the idea, my partner and I uh, had the idea for make model for some years and we'd kick it around back and forth and say, yeah, you know, we really ought to do this. And one thing would lead to another and we just never got it done. And when you have nothing else to do because you don't have a job, you say, well, maybe it's time to really make this thing go. And and the real beauty of that is that allowed me to take all of my time, uh, all of my energy, and really fuel my motivation to turn this into the app and the game that, that we think guys are really going to like. So I even look at that, uh, while it was a, a challenge, I think it's a blessing in disguise. And we're, we're finding out now. So uh, excited about it. Well, you have a wonderful approach here because a lot of people, when that happens to them, I mean, they're left a bit devastated, especially if they don't see it coming. Or even if they saw it coming and it actually happened and they feel like, well, I didn't do anything wrong. It's just things changed. The yep. company changed. The company was bought, sold, whatever it might be. Um, what are a couple uh, maybe golden nuggets as you look back on that you could share with folks so that not only they maybe could see it coming, but they're a little better prepared, but also have that great attitude that you have that, hey, you know, the old saying that a door closes, another opens. Well, sometimes it's hard to see that other door opening. but what you shared here was great. You now had time to tackle something you'd been thinking about. Don't waste that time. Just jump in and do it, right? Yeah. You know, I'm personally, I'm a big fan of uh, historical nonfiction. And I, I love the World War II generation, the things that they went through, the the soldiers and, and so on, and the perseverance. And then they came back and, you know, they raised families and worked jobs. And I look at uh, the opportunities that we have today. Uh, yeah, I look at my kids and, and the fact that absolutely everything they ever want to know is available on their phone. I look at everything that's out there and think we are living in an incredible time for discovery and for innovation. And, and this industry is perfect for it. Yeah. I looked at everything and thought, I've wanted to do this for a long time, so let's do it. It's all out there. And here we are. Well, I'm a great example of that too, Mark. You know, uh, starting a podcast, I didn't even know what a podcast was when my <laughs> son first suggested I do this. I'm like, what? And yeah, it's incredible. I figured it out. I watched a lot. Of, it, it wasn't easy. It took time and effort and dedication, a lot of work, but created a website, learned how to podcast, started calling people, learned how to record. And here we go. Here I am at show number 1,154 in four years. Blows me away sometimes. And uh, I get to meet really cool people. I mean, it's just, yeah, you're right. We are living in an incredible opportunistic time. 
that you can get out and do things. You can write blogs for virtually free. You can create websites for nothing. Uh, it's just cool. Yeah, if you've got an idea today, uh, really, there's almost no way for you not to get it out there. And and the other thing that allows so much is just experimentation and failure. You know, you can fail mm-hmm. today and just keep moving forward. And I think that's that's really the key to life with with everything. Uh, it's just you yeah. just got to keep moving forward. So yeah, keep moving your feet. Get up every morning and be active and do something and find your passion and and just embrace it and. You know, Mark here is an example of uh, well over 1,100 people who figured that out exactly. Of all these inspiring automotive enthusiasts I have on cars, yeah. Let's shift gears and talk about a big aha moment. Maybe we touched on it here with this new app you're doing, but uh, is there a big aha moment that you've had in your life that kind of illuminated a new path for you? Yeah, actually. Uh, again, we'll talk about make model for a second. The way the whole idea started is buddies and I, we would just shoot texts at one another, which were pictures of cars. And we'd just say, what is this? And over time, that got shortened to make model with a question. We'd tighten the photos tighter and tighter, so we'd make it harder and harder. One day, uh, a couple of years ago, I sent that uh, sent one of those pictures to Doug Evans, who at that time was the uh, chairman of SEMA. Doug shot me back immediately with the correct answer. And not only the correct answer, but also detail about the car. And I thought, boy, if a guy like that, a busy guy like that is going to respond that quickly to just a picture, maybe we're on to something. So, um, so that really made me realize that, that people just beyond my, uh, my circle of friends might really like this, uh, this idea. So that's where we are. That was my big Well, moment. I think it's cool. I have friends. Well, I have so many Facebook friends now because of cars. Yeah, but even I've rekindled friendships. I have a, a friend that uh, last month was uh, in Italy, and he kept sending me pictures of cars. Go, Mark Green, what is this? I know you'll know what it is. What <laughs> right. is this motorcycle? You know, and and uh, yeah, it became kind of a little bit of a game and so forth. So um, shout out to him and and uh, having me uh, kind of test my my knowledge here with European model cars that don't make it over here. I'd have to some of them I had to kind of what is no I think I know what that oh that's right that's an Abarth okay I get it I get it so. Yeah, it's fun. What's so neat about that is is guys love to talk about things like that. And what we're doing with this site is we're giving people the the opportunity not only to guess about the cars, but also to foster communications and and uh, and learn things. I, I think there's a, a great opportunity to connect people, and that's really what this app is about. Oh yeah, absolutely. And a little shout out to my buddy Michael Boyage and uh, guy I rekindled a f- Facebook friendship with that I went to high school with that I'd lost oh, track my. of. And uh, yeah, he's a an attorney in Central California, and uh, now we kind of share Facebook photos and things, and uh, he likes riding motorcycles in the dirt, and he's in Italy having some fun right now. Well, let's talk about your first special car, that first car that had great meaning for you and maybe a memory about that vehicle. I'd say, well, my first car was a uh, 73 Ford F100. It uh, had a three on the tree. I think it had a 360 in it. And what was so neat about that is I saved my money when I was 14 and 15. I got a job working at a gas station. And actually, a a guy who used to come into the gas station uh, had had the truck. And I asked him all the time if he'd sell it to me. And, of course, he said no. And one day I asked him and he said, yes, I want to say $700 later, it was mine. I had that. And I think at every single stoplight, I burned as much rubber as I possibly could. <laughs> uh, um, so that was my first one. And then and then when I got a, uh, became an adult and got a little bit of money, I'd say my first classic, the car that I absolutely loved, I had a 72 BMW 3.0 CSI. And that thing was just, uh, I love that. Pillarless coupe style. It was just, I, yeah. I thought, great car, great car. Those are beautiful. Oh, I love yeah. those cars. They're fantastic. I have a good buddy here in the Northwest. It has a really, really nice one he found, uh, 3.0 CS mm-hmm. that he found in Europe with super low miles. Just a beautiful car. Yeah, really nice score there. How about Seller's Remorse? Is there a vehicle you've owned and let go that you really wish you had back? Well, that would be one of them, certainly. Um, and I had a, uh, I had a 74 2002 TII that I'd actually gotten oh. from Peter Slishkovich. I don't know if you know who Peter is, uh, but he's in Southern California. He's known as Coop King. And I yes. bought that, gosh, a long time ago. And one thing led to another, and I ended up having to sell that one. And I always regret that. I, that was just such a fun car. It was a go-kart on roller skates. I see a little BMW friend in your garage here. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I liked BMWs quite a bit, quite a bit. They're yeah. fun cars. Awesome, awesome. Well, I would love for you to talk more about MakeModel.com because being SEMA week here and all the cool new things at SEMA, and that's what makes SEMA so great is just all the cool new things. But the fact that you guys are here and you're launching this app during SEMA week is oh so appropriate. But tell our listeners more about it how they can get their hands on it, how they can use it, all the different things you have thought through on putting this together. Sure, thanks. Yeah, well, what we did, as I said, with with Make Model, it's an automotive-focused game, and basically what it does is it challenges a car guy or a car car girl's knowledge of cars. What we provide is every day there are five new challenges, and you have a, a time clock. You've got 60 seconds in order to guess the five challenges you win points for quickest time. You've got the ability to challenge your friends. You've got the ability to upload your own pictures to the site. What's really fun about it, as I mentioned before, is every time that, that you play the game, after you've played the game, now the comments section opens. And now you can communicate and talk with people all over the place who are also playing the game. And what we found oh, in wow. our yeah, what we found in our testing, which was really cool, is that you look at a picture and you think, well, I think it's this or I think it's that. We give you six choices. You choose the make, and then whatever the make is, you choose, and we give you six model choices. And if you, uh, at the end of that, after you figure out whether you're right or wrong, as I said, the comments open. And it's just been so neat because you'll find somebody who will say, oh, I thought that was a headlight off of a 67 Mustang. And of course, if you know Mustang guys, they know their cars pretty well. And so you'll get the next guy saying, no, that's a 68. And somebody else will go back and forth. So it's a a lot of good natured ribbing and and having some fun with it. And we're just excited that that people are, uh, are having fun playing our game. And that's that's really what it's what it's been all about. I think it's really cool. And uh, for car people who are enthusiastic, automotive enthusiasts, this is a, a fun brain tease, uh, kind of works your skull a little bit, lets you get away. But I love the fact that you've opened it up to comments because now you start to bring people together. Uh, if you think about Instagram, I think that's what that does so well. Uh, as I've used Instagram, you start to meet people and go, oh, I never knew. And for me, finding people to be on this show uh, it's just like a little hunting ground, if you will, uh, to uh, go, well, you should be a guest on my show. Yeah, I didn't even know you existed. Oh, wow, this is really cool. Yeah, it brings people together. And the car industry, I think, brings people together like none other, just like this SEMA event this week. I mean, you just look at all the people here, and it's just everyone has a smile on their face, except at the end of the day when your your feet are a little barking a little <laughs> bit from all the, all the walking that you do here. But uh very, very cool. So people can log in to makemodel.com, spelled just the way it looks. They can subscribe. They can be a part of it. Uh, are there any Download tricks or app. tips you might offer us? Well, yeah. What's kind of fun, too, is uh, is when, once you register, every morning we send you a notice or an email, and it tells you that the game has gone live. And sometimes during that, and when you get that communication, there's a little hint to maybe one of the cars that uh, that you're going to see there. So can't tell okay. you a whole lot more to it uh, other yeah. than that. I, I ca- kind of call it an Easter egg for if, if you're familiar with the yeah. gaming world and, and how that's played. So, Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, we're excited about that. That got a lot of really good feedback when we did the testing. And and the other thing that uh, the guys really liked is we've got a feature in it where you can challenge other people. So there's a leaderboard and you can see who's who's the top or wherever on the leaderboard. And you just click and you ask him if he wants if, if he wants or if he'll challenge you to a game and you each get five five images to guess on. Uh, you can <laughs> challenge folks yeah, inside the game or you can invite new people in. So a lot of fun. Well, there. that's brilliant. Nothing like getting two car enthusiasts together for a challenge. Uh, I think the first time two cars even existed on the planet, the first thing they did was race. Right. So uh, <laughs> I think you're right. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> Absolutely. Very, very cool. Well, again, makeamodel.com. Uh, this is a really cool app that I think all of us, especially all of us here at Cars yeah, are going to have some fun with. Very cool. Maybe now uh, I better, uh, you know, not play with it until uh, I get back to my hotel room. Otherwise, it's going to divert my attention from all the shiny objects around here. But uh, fantastic. Well, here's a little introspective question for you, Mark. If you woke up tomorrow and you were a car sitting in a garage or a vehicle or a bike, whatever, what would you be and why? 
That's a great question. I, I think I'd probably be a pickup truck. And i tell you why. The pickup truck gets just about anything done that you need done. But if you have to, you can uh, you can shine it up a little bit. and It doesn't look too bad to go out on a date on a Saturday night or to take your wife or your girlfriend or something. So that's probably where I sit with that. There you go. I like it. You know, last weekend, my next door neighbor and my people are my my people. My people. Did I say that? My they friends did. that follow me. To follow me on Facebook, uh, probably saw me post a couple of videos. Uh, my neighbor Bill kept saying, "Hey, you got to drive my new truck." He bought a new Ford Raptor, mm. and uh, it was it was raining. I went out and drove that thing. Holy cow! That thing's got some juice behind it. It sounded great, and so trucks are cool. I mean, they're American icons. So I think that's great, Mark. You Certainly are indeed a here truck. In Sima, that's for sure. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, yeah, everywhere. Yeah. Well, up next is the last lap. But before we put the pedal to the metal, let's say thank you to today's Cars Yeah sponsors. Everyone who knows me knows I'm really picky when it comes to my cars and keeping them looking new. I'm a huge fan of Covercraft floor mats. I've protected my vehicle with their products for decades. Want to keep your vehicle's interior looking new? It's easy with Covercraft floor mats. They will protect your vehicle's factory carpets from daily abuse, weather, pets, children, weekend adventures, and those everyday spills. It's a fast, easy, and stylish way to keep your vehicle looking new. Covercraft floor mats come in a wide variety of styles, materials, and configurations, all designed for maximum protection. In addition to Premier Plush and Berber Custom Floor Mats, you'll also find cargo liners, canine cargo area liners, dash covers, and sunscreens. Enhance your vehicle's looks while protecting the factory finishes with easy-to-install and easy-to-clean floor mats. Covercraft is the right choice. Learn more today at Covercraft.com and tell them Mark at Cars Yeah sent you. That's Covercraft.com. What's every automotive enthusiast's dream? To design and build that perfect garage. My friends at Metron Garage are a group of creative talents who've combined their passion for cars with their careers in architecture. Their service includes unique garage design and state-of-the-art fabrication. They will create the coolest custom garage for you and your vehicles. Metron Garage's system features fully engineered commercial grade material and structural framing that's stronger than traditional construction. Their designs are pre-engineered to meet your building codes for fast, bolt-together construction. With over 25 years of experience, you'll see a 3D rendering to visualize your custom garage and the final structure will fulfill all your storage needs. Contact Metron Garage today and begin realizing your dream garage. Go to metrongarage.com. That's metrongarage.com. Garage is built for discerning enthusiasts. Where it's not just a garage, it's where your dream garage comes true. Okay, Mark, we are back and we're entering the last lap. I'm going to fire off a series of questions and ask you to give our listeners some very quick blips of the throttle answers. So here we go. Well, what's the best automotive advice you've ever received? You know, again, I'll go back to my dad, and it's real simple. It's check your tires. Uh, it doesn't really matter how fast it goes or anything else like that. If you can't roll, it's not going to go anywhere. So check your tires. You know, I just took my wife's car in for a service, and I was talking to them. They gave me a loaner car, and I pulled out, and it just didn't feel right. I went back in. I said, something's not right with one of the tire pressures here. Sure enough, one was uh, down at 20 pounds instead of 32. And she goes, wow, that was pretty intuitive that you noticed that. And I said, well, I don't know, just seat time, I guess. But she said, you know, you'd be surprised the cars that come in, almost every one of them has their tire pressures not set right. I, almost I, every car. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. crazy. Pretty, it's crazy. I know. I know. It's the most important between you, thing between you and the road. So yeah. And it's easy to do. Would you share one of your personal habits you believe has contributed to your many successes? Well, I think, it, of course, it doesn't have a whole lot to do with automotive, but I'm a big believer in, in early, early morning. So I try to uh, get to the gym most mornings by 5 o'clock. And my theory on that is, while it's great to work out and push yourself, the other part of it is uh, I kind of look at it. If nothing else happens the rest of the day that's good, well, at least you started off with a good win in the morning. So I feel like it's oh. I can start off with a win. Everything else is downhill from there. You know, it's an awesome attitude, and I commend you for that. That's hard to get up early and do that. You think about the military, you know, one of the things they do is you get up, you make your bed, and you do PT, physical therapy. And there's a reason for that. And one is exactly what you said. When you make your bed, you feel like you've accomplished a task. You've got one thing done. 
and then you go work out and you've got another thing done and it sets you on a course. So uh, kudos to you for being so diligent about that. Now, how about a resource? Other than uh, this wonderful new app that you've created, makemodel.com, I think that's a cool resource. Is there another one you might want to share with us? Yeah, I'll tell you another one that I'm sure most of your uh, your listeners know about is Bring a Trailer. I've followed oh, Bring yeah. a Trailer, gosh, since I think since the beginning. I've uh, sold a couple cars and bought one Bring a Trailer, and I I love the site. I love the uh, the interaction that goes on. I'm not you know, I'm not looking to buy anything right now, but I just like reading what people say about the car. I think the way they self police. Uh, the comments is fantastic, and that's kind of how I start my morning. I put, flip my uh, computer screen on and go over to bring a trailer before I get my work started and see what's going on there. You know, I had Randy Nonnenberg, who's one of the sure. co-founders of that on my show, yeah. and uh, I curse him every morning in a nice way because it's like, oh, look at all these cards I want to buy. And I've, I tell you, I have a whole host of friends that every morning will text me, uh-oh, what do you think about this? Uh-oh, what do you think about that? Yeah. Yeah, it's almost it's almost a curse because there's so many things you want from yeah. there. I just yesterday called a friend of mine who's been a guest on the show, has a car for sale there. And I said, hey, how's it going? You know, how's the sale going? So forth. And I tell you, friends of mine who bought cars and sold cars there, every one of them has had a great experience with bring a trailer. It's fantastic. Yeah, I think it is. I I, uh, I also love the fact that my dad, who lives in Arizona, if he sees a Corvair, which was one of his first cars, He'll shoot a note to my brother or me, and he'll say, did you see the Corvair? And, of course, we'll be like, Ed, Ed, we saw it. And that'll start facilitating conversations about the kids or whatever else. So I think that site is uh, is so much more than just, uh, just a car site. Yeah, I agree with you. And there again, there's a little uh, secret thing, or it's not, not secret anymore now that you're out here with MakeModel.com. But yeah, it spurs conversation, communication, and that's always a really, really good thing for sure. If I could wave my magic wand and allow you to have a drink with anyone in the automotive industry, living or deceased, who would that be? You know, I think it'd be Preston Tucker. I just think that's a guy, I mean, talk about a David against Goliath uh, uh, story there. The fact that that he had the uh, the fortitude to try to go against the big three, and it, it didn't work out, arguably. Boy, he gave it a shot, and he gave it his all. And I, I would love to know just what drove, drove, drove him to uh, to challenge them like he did. Uh, no doubt. Uh, my listeners, regular listeners, will know that I had Preston Tucker's grandson, Sean Tucker, on the show here way back in uh, April of 15. He was like my 238th, 39th guest, something like that. And this past summer, of course, for the first time in the lawn at Pebble Beach, they had Tuckers, and I couldn't believe uh-huh. it. I thought, how could there have never been a Tucker on the lawn at Pebble? It just it didn't make sense. And I think they had 12 or 14 of them or something like that, uh, including including a frame. So you could kind of see what was underneath the body and everything. And, of course, Rob Ida, who's been a guest here, who's a restoration guy, is building a copy, well, copy, the only Tucker torpedo to ever exist. The car was never built. Um, I think he's about done with that thing. So, uh, yeah, very, very cool stuff. How about a book? Is there a book that you've read that you think our listeners would enjoy? Yeah, as, as I said earlier, I'm a big fan of of the World War II generation. And I, I picked up a book. I think it was at a bookstore in Pittsburgh one time. It had no recommendation or anything, but I just saw it. I thought the, uh, the title looked interesting. It's The Airman and the Headhunter. And what it's about is about some uh, some WW2, World War II fighters who got, uh, unfortunately got shot down over Borneo. And it talks about how they survived and the uh, uh, folks that helped them survived as well as the people that were tracking them. And it's just, it's just a great book about perseverance and the her- human will to survive. Um, and kind of like I said before, those kind of things really put our lives in perspective of, of, uh, of what we ought to be able to accomplish today compared to what our uh, fathers and grandfathers did. Absolutely. That book's by Judith Hyman. Uh, really interesting book. And I'll make sure I put that on Mark's show notes page on the Cars yeah website. You can find all these great resources he shared with us on CarsYeah.com. Just go to CarsYeah.com, type in Mark McCracken, M, little C, big C, R A C K E N. Try saying McCracken without smiling. I think, uh, I don't think you can do it. It's just the coolest last name ever. So here we are, up to the checkered flag, Mark, and this last question can be a bit of a doozy, especially when we're surrounded by all this beautiful cars, these builds here at SEMA. Today, I'm going to buy you any cool collector car on the planet. 
Doesn't matter who has it, where it is, I'm going to deliver it to you, but there's a few rules. It's the only one you can have. You can't sell it to buy a bunch of other toys with, but money's no object. And you kind of drive it. I want you to get out and enjoy this car. No garage queens here. So what can I buy you today? Well, I'm a big American muscle car fan, not surprisingly, but uh, <laughs> if you're going to buy me a car, I'll take a Ferrari Dino 246 GT, the old chairs and flares. I think that thing would be, that would go really, really nice in my garage. Uh, no kidding. Uh, yeah, one of my favorites. What color would you like it to be? Because they made those Dinos in a huge variety of colors. I mean, it's incredible how many colors you could buy that car in. Yeah, you know, you've seen the yellow and you've seen the red, but I, if I were getting that, I'd go black all the way. I'd go black yeah. all the way. Well, are you familiar with, uh, there's a Ferrari collector in LA, David Lee, who has a car that was custom built by a past guest here. Or he kind of put the, the build together, I should say, Andy Cohen. Incredible car that has, I believe it's an F40 Ferrari engine in the back. I uh, might be wrong about that, but I saw it at the Quail. Um, it's basically an outlaw, kind of an R group in the Porsche world, Ferrari Dino that was so nicely done. I think I got to get you that car. I was just going to say, I, I am familiar <laughs> with that one. I thought that was the one you were talking about. So, uh, Oh, okay. I, I'm ready for there it. There you go. Let me know when you, you are okay. over. Sure thing. I'll call, call David and see what I can do. I've been trying to get him on the show. I'm going to get him on the show eventually. Andy said he could help me do that. But uh, yeah, that car is just, I mean, I love the pictures, but seeing it in person and the quality of the build and what they oh. did, a lot of Ferrari guys kind of say, sacrilege, you can't do that. But oh. I, I think what they did is pretty neat. Yeah, that, and the way he drives that, from what I've seen, that's the way you should yeah. drive those cars. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Mark, you've taken us on an awesome ride today. I've really enjoyed your stories. I want to thank you for sharing your journey. I want to congratulate you and your guys on launching MakeModel.com, the app. I mean, this is so cool. I think all my listeners are going to have to sign up, join, and be a part of this because uh, I, I tell you, it's it's really, really cool. Could you offer us a little parting piece of wisdom or guidance before you rip off into the Las Vegas desert sunset in that Ferrari Dino? <laughs> yeah, I'd say the last thing is uh, visit MakeModel.com, download the app, share it with your friends, and just have fun. That's why we built it, and we hope you have fun with it. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And again, listener, I'll make, I'll make sure I put links to that on Mark's show notes page so you can check it out. And you should check it out because this is really, really cool. And I want to thank everybody who said hello to me here at SEMA this week. It's been absolutely splendid. One more day to go if my legs can uh, can handle it. Fantastic and good to see you here, Mark. And thanks for being so generous with your time, your expertise, and for sharing your experiences with our listeners here. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you down the road or playing on MakeModel.com. Absolutely. I appreciate it being on here with you. You're welcome. You take care of your cars, but who takes care of your investments? Tune-ups aren't just for engines. Updating your financial plan is important, too. Your GPS may take you from A to B, but it won't help you on the road to financial freedom. For that, you need a good co-pilot and a very trusted advisor. Chris Kimball, CFP, is just the man for the job. He'll guide you down that road without driving you crazy. For over 25 years, Chris has helped people just like you and me with their financial planning and investments. With a master's degree in financial services, he is eminently qualified, and he's a car guy too. Learn more at chrisvkimble.com or call 866-ON-A-PLAN. Securities through Money Concepts Capital Corp. Member FINRA SIPC. CK Financial Services is not affiliated with Money Concepts Capital Corp. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah.